I'm Mayor Tommy Roberts. Welcome back to the Mayor's Table. My guest this morning is Hank Adair, who is the director of the Farmington Electric Utility System. Hank, uh, it's good to have you back. Thank you, Mayor, for inviting me again. You're busy all the time and uh, a lot of things going on. You're dealing with a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those issues is to see that the city of Farmington adopts an integrated resource plan. And uh, so you've been working on that for a number of months now. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the process has included the Public Utility Commission of the city of Farmington and, uh, and that body has heard the presentation, has actually given a recommendation to the city council, and uh, now the city council has taken action on the approval of the integrated resource plan. So I wanna just give our viewers a basic understanding of what an IPR is, uh, standing for integrated resource plan, and then uh, talk a little bit about the details of this plan that the council approved. Let's start, uh, start with the process. Uh, what is an integrated resource plan? Well, Farmington Electric as a municipal electric utility is interesting in that it has generation assets. So what an integrated resource plan is, is every so many years on an interval, and ours we do for a requirement on a five-year interval, is to analyze your, your resources, your portfolio, where it is, what you want it to look like in, this, in the future, and then you, you analyze that against key goals that you might have. And we have four key goals, which is cost, risk, environmental, and uh, operability. And we, we set those goals, and then with that integrated resource plan, what we think uh, fuel prices are gonna do in the future, what we think load will do in the future, what we think new technologies will do in the future, you do all of this analysis, figure out some portfolios or some standards to work against, and then run those through a model to, to show results, to, to kind of set the strategic plan for utility. Let's, let's um, go back even a step farther and let's talk about uh, our base load and uh, how we service that base load. What's our energy uh, fuel portfolio look like today? Mm -hmm. Well, right now, you know, our peak load this year actually happened in June of this year, late June, is we actually had 196 megawatts of requirement. That's been the load of the utility. Our peak load ever was 206 megawatts, which was about 2009. And so how we manage that load is we manage, we don't have a, enough generation to cover every megawatt for megawatt. So we own and operate coal resource. We have 8.5% of San Juan Generating Station Unit 4. Um, our biggest contingent asset is what we call contingent is our biggest load capability is our combined cycle bluff U plant, a, a great efficient plant. We have a natural gas fire. Natural gas fired, yes, sir. And then we have a another gas fired plant called Animus Plant. It's a, it's a simple cycle. It's what we call a peaking facility. We only run it when we really need to based on its efficiencies. And then we have hydropower that comes out of Navajo, Gener Navajo Station here, not Navajo on the Navajo Reservation, the coal plant, but Navajo Hydro from Navajo Dam. And we generate about 9 to 13 megawatts and we get run of the river basically from it. So we have a good mixed portfolio of coal, hydro, low carbon use, and natural gas in our system fleet. Our planning process, again, which is this IPR process, it's our future planning process, uh, is complicated a bit uh, because of the uncertainties surrounding the future operation of San Juan Generating Station. You yes. mentioned that we have an ownership interest in Unit 4, a little over an 8% interest in Unit 4. Mm -hmm. I think that's about a 3% about a interest in the overall plant operation. The entire station, yes, sir. Uh, Public Service Company of New Mexico recently came out with its regulatorily mandated uh, IPR, mm -hmm. I IRP, I'm sorry. I IRP, yes, sir. And, um, and it looks as though that uh, the, their IRP indicates that the best go forward mode of operation would be the closure of San Juan Generating Station in 2022. Of course, that would have an impact on our fuel and power portfolio because we do have about 43 megawatts Correct. in San Juan Generating Station. Let's talk a little bit about how the integrated resource plan 
dealt with that contingency. Mm -hmm. So we've looked at it and we've known that the participation agreement, as we call it, the, the project of San Juan Generating Station, the project ended in June, June, ends in June of 2022 or July 1. And so we've looked at scenarios based on what we might have thought it would be. And looking at our load, we considered two scenarios. We had our integrated resource plan build four portfolios where San Juan Generating Station would retire in year 2027. We picked that just as a target. And then we picked five portfolios or built five portfolios where San Juan Generating Station would retire in year 2022 when the agreement ends. And we used those nine scenarios running all the variabilities to do an analysis to kick out the best results for what our plan should be. When we looked at it, our plan, you know, basically looks at replacing it, looks at some key goals we have, and actually the plan shows benefit because to replace that baseload generation of San Juan Unit 4, the 43 megawatts that you mentioned, Mayor, that's going to be a significant investment to the utility. And even if it was deferred five years between the two scenarios, because we had two portfolios that were identically the same, that would be a net present value savings over a 20-year span of cost of $20 million to our customers. So it's beneficial that the, the plant would stay running. We would hope it would. Um, but we've planned for multiple scenarios to, to make sure we've covered all the bets for our customers. So let's look at the scenario under which San Juan Generating Station ceases to operate in 2022. And um, looking at the four... Uh, evaluation scenarios that uh, this integrated resource plan uh, considered. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the the, the different factors uh, that were a part of those four different scenarios and then let's talk about what the council actually adopted. Very good. You know the 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 four criteria we have is cost and, and frankly that's looking at net present value and finding the lowest cost for our customers. Which one economically of the scenarios we ran, and some were to, to buy uh, to buy generation, some were to build generation, some were to build different portfolios. But then the scenarios were to run to evaluate based on one cost, lowest cost to our customers, so we could pass that through. We're very proud of our low cost utility. One is on risk, and so we look at what is the best evaluation. Honestly, if you own an asset, you control it, you have less risk um, if you entirely have it within your control. The other benefits, though, are is if you, if you buy into a utility, it may be large scale, it may have better cost ratios. But the con of that is, is you have less control of it. So you evaluate all those risk factors. The next is environmental is, is what is the carbon emissions have compared to the portfolios? What, what has that and how much renewables does each portfolio have in its evaluation? And the last is operability. You, wanna, you want as a utility to be, especially a municipal utility, you want to you wanna be very conservative. So we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. So that's operability. If there was an event or if you had an outage for maintenance, then it's high cost to replace that power. You want your largest contingent to be spread out so you have multiple units that you're under control. So those are the, the scenarios we run our criteria on. What does the um, preferred Mm -hmm. scenario look like, the scenario that was embraced and uh, approved by the City Council? Mm -hmm. The scenario has kind of what I would call a short, middle, and long-range plan. And so the short plan is, is we have some, some long-range purchase power agreements that are going away. We need some voltage control. And we actually need to build some quick response for future distributive generation and, frankly, what we're seeing right now being built within the system. So with that, that's the installation of two 8.6 megawatt reciprocating engines. They're very efficient. They respond very quickly. They adjust load very quickly. And they also help with distributive generation that when clouds go over, things shut down very quickly, they can respond very quickly. They also help us with voltage control, and they also help us take advantage of our gas contract. In the mid-range, it depends on when San Juan shuts down, would be the replacement of it with a 58 megawatt, replace that generation with a 58 megawatt combined cycle plant. And that's a very large investment. And that would happen, that would be our mid-range mid plan. Long range is to invest in solar. And as you know, we have five megawatts in solar in that long range portfolio or our best portfolio. We're also in the interim looking at community solar and some industrial solar in the short term on top of that. And I would say, you know, I, with council's approval, 
we greatly appreciate that. But we do one every five years, basically, on it being a plan. So as things come up and things change, we evaluate accordingly. So, so it's a, a work in process. It's, a, it's truly a plan, but it's flexible. Yes. Uh, one of the uh, questions that was asked and uh, elaborated on during our discussions at the city council level was, uh, would there be an opportunity to, to move uh, solar generation up on the, in the time frame uh, under the plan that was approved by the council? Uh, so about f five megawatts of solar would come on in 2032, I believe. Yes, sir. Um, there, uh, a lot happening in the solar industry now, and things are changing rapidly. Yes. Storage is uh, something that's being heavily discussed. And Coming on very strong. Some progress is being made in storage. Uh, many people would ask, why wait until 2032 to bring solar on as, a, as an integral part of our... Um, Mm -hmm. of our generation portfolio. Yeah. What, what would be your response to that? You know, uh, when we've looked at it, and I would say solar, we agree that it has that opportunity. One of our key things is, is for our system is voltage control. And we have actually seen a fourfold increase in solar from our customers. Distributive generation have an interest in it. So one of our key things is to put the reciprocating engines in to respond to it and put that investment in early. Also, once we have that, it's the opportunity for solar to come in there. As you've seen, solar is, is decreased in price fourfold or a quarter of the cost is what it was previously. We are seeing big breakover points in what the price of batteries are. And so when the future comes and adjusts with that, that plan can adjust from that long range up even more. And I think we'll see that in the opportunity in future IRPs. The community solar discussion is something that would allow the community to dip its toe in the water with respect to solar. We're talking about a half megawatt to a megawatt of yes. capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, how it looks isn't exactly known yet, but we're moving forward yes. on rolling this idea out into the community to see what interest there is. One option, if, the, if there's not a tremendous amount of interest in uh, citizens buying in uh, mm -hmm. to the community solar project would be for the city to to subsidize it uh, and and uh, just to to uh, integrate solar mm -hmm. into the system to a, a more significant degree. Yes. But what what do you think our maximum capacity is with respect to a solar component of generation in our portfolio? Right now, I would say it's 15 megawatts, and that's in our current setup as we set right now. And again, consider that to be both the utility solar and the customer solar combined. So it's those two combined, about 15 megawatts. Once we get some more quicker response, that can actually be a little bit deeper, but that's what we've seen it to be right now. And you're spot on, Mayor. Once we see community solar, we've seen interest in it from what we did from surveys last year. Once we see that interest, we could definitely take on, and we are interested in taking that on from an industrial solar level with the utility itself. What's the efficiency rate for solar, mm -hmm. I mean, and by that I mean, uh, how much of the time can solar contribute right. to uh, to customer needs? Mm -hmm. We call that capacity factor. So, what is the capacity factor? It varies winter and summer, but we've seen like it depends on whether it's fixed or if it can track. If it can track with the sun and follow it, it's more efficient. If it's single uh, sitting there, it's a little less efficient. Rule of thumb and what we used for the model was about thirty percent. And that's a little bit on the high end because we wanted to take a conservative approach in the analysis. So we'll always have to have some backup uh, from t traditional sources that are reliable. Uh, battery capacity could change that dynamic to some degree, but is it your opinion that there will always be a fairly significant need for uh, the traditional sources of, of power generation? I think there will be in the in the short term, and I'll say that. I think someday, probably not, actually, but and being in the short term, very, very much so. And as we see that price break over and where will batteries go in the future, they're going to fill a niche with it. But we're going to need some some thermal in, in definitely the short term and definitely within the 20-year span that we have with our IRP. So, so when you talk about the short term, you're, you're talking at least 20 years, is Within right? the 20 years, some right. form, right. yes. Right. And that portfolio will gradually adjust through the years as right. it goes forward. Well, Hank, um, I appreciate you for coming in and, and talking about this integrated resource plan. It's a, I think it's a, an important step that we, we take. It's an important planning tool. Mm -hmm. I want to reiterate to our viewers that it's a, it 
truly that, a planning tool. It's flexible, can be adjusted to developments in the, in the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we um, are going to be on top of those developments, I think. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I think it was a, it's a great tool for a utility to do. And again, it's a plan. I think you hit it spot on, Mayor. Okay. We want to thank you for being with us again here on the Mayor's Table. We hope you have learned something uh, about the integrated resource plan that uh, you didn't know before. And we hope it's useful to you. We look forward to seeing you again next Monday.